Hey there! Today we're going to talk about an ink, and I don't actually have the bottle at hand. And the reason for that is that I'm running very low on that ink. It came in a bottle like this, so I'm sure you will uh, recognize this as a Noodler's bottle. Um, I'm talking about Noodler's Axe Feather, aka Anti Feather. I can't show you the label because it's gone. It was fantastic. A, a, a red circle with a feather in there, and then a red dash through it, like a traffic sign or something. Uh, I really like that, uh, and I love that ink. I got to that ink because at some point I was starting to dabble into calligraphy a bit and I found that a lot of black inks, for example Visconti black, when you put those in really broad nibs, and I'm talking about multiple millimeter nibs, um, a lot of these black inks can actually turn a bit of a, in, into a bit of a grey. It's a very dark grey. And although, you know, 50 shades of grey can be very interesting, uh, usually when you're doing calligraphy, if you're using a black we want it to be a really black black, a truly dark black, a black that is as dark as the inside of a coffin on a moonless night. Um, and so I contacted Brian Goulet and I asked him uh, whether he had any suggestions. And he said, well, a lot of calligraphers appear to like Noodler's X Feather. So I purchased a four and a half ounce bottle from him and this was the first four and a half ounce bottle I nearly finished. So that's saying a lot about the, the quality of the ink, I think. Um, Right now, I have it in this inkwell, which I got with a Laban pen. Um, it's an interesting inkwell, looks quite nice. It's a little leaky, so I can't tilt it. Um, this is the ink. It's clear glass. It's this black. It's really, really black. I love it. It's pretty much waterproof. Uh, it, it flows well. It, it, doesn't, um, it doesn't feather, true to its name. Um, sometimes takes a long time to dry because I think this is in the the Nootless bulletproof range I'm not absolutely sure maybe I'm wrong um, I'm sure someone will check that and, and correct me if I'm wrong um, but so it, the trade-off is that it takes a bit longer to dry but in the end you end up with the blackest black I've ever seen um, you have Nootless Heart of Darkness which is also very black I have seen that in person but I haven't used it I know that's a very dark black too so I, I guess maybe the two are a little interchangeable. I don't know about feathering properties of, of Heart of Darkness. But there you have it. A very dark black. That's what we're going to be looking at today. Black inks are not for everyone. Some people think they're boring. Others do really like them. Um, I'm sort of in between. I hardly ever use a black in a fountain pen on an everyday basis. Uh, but, you know, they, they have their place. So I'm going to do the writing sample next. I hope this is going to be useful. And um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so here we go with just adjusting the paper, sorry. Noodlers anti feather. Let us start with a fine nib. Then we move to a medium nib. I see a red door and I want it painted black. We should sing more in our lives. I think it should our life should be like a Bollywood movie. Everybody's singing and dancing and colors and stuff and things doing other things. It's all very happy.
I want it painted. I don't have any more space to write the word black, so we'll just make a patch of ink. How about that? Broad and then italic. Would you think this ink is wet at all? This is like writing with a felt-tipped pen. And I love it. So, flow is excellent. Um, I really like it. I, 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 I love this black, as I explained. Great for calligraphy. Uh, today, of course, it's not going to be extremely useful to do these three passes because this is as black as a black can get. Uh, it's unlikely to give any shading, but just because I always do this, I'll do it here too. Now this is going to take a long time to dry, so you will just have to wait and see what happens. I'm grabbing a flex nib We are talking about X. Feather. Note that this is the clear nib creeper. I worked a little bit on the nib. I told you at some point it had died. And uh, X feather, it, it works well with this ink. So, just so you know. I always get the feeling it is a little thicker than the average ink. Difficult to explain. I mean, it is fountain pen safe, um, but it's it's thicker. It doesn't like doing that. I'll have to squeeze out a drop of ink into the feed. There we go. Still a bit of an issue, but we're getting there. Okay. Try to squeeze out a little bit of line variation from the medium. So as I said, a little thicker, very, very black. No shading, no grey, just all black. Um, there we go. How are we doing on wetness here? Oh! Usually this ink takes a long time to dry, but it's already dry, that's nice. Then let's add a second coat of ink. Not that it's going to do anything, but... Just for the record, broad nib. Time to get serious. And italic. It's feather. So as far as I'm concerned, if you're looking for a black, this is it. Of course, there are other noodless inks that are well known for its intense blackness. Uh, Heart of Darkness springs to mind. Now, I'm sure that's an interesting ink, I just have never used it. So this is my number one black. There we go. Okay, then while I'm holding this pen anyway, we may as well do something with a really broad nib. There we go. I'll do a bit of writing with a medium nib. And 
And, of course, there is the Tardif test. Somehow this feels like I'm in kindergarten again, but I'll just ignore that conveniently. Wipe the knife. Put that away. I really wouldn't like to go to an emergency room and say, Oh, I'm sorry, I cut my jugular vein. Yes, I was recording an encyclopedia entry, you see. What? Yeah, you know, that's going to be uh, a problem. So first, while this is drawing a bit, let's have a look at these three uh, samples. I mean, I don't see a whole lot of difference between that and that, which which means that this is a really dark, saturated ink, right? There's, there's not a whole lot of shading going on. In fact, there is no shading going on. The ink has a somewhat reflective sheen to it. I'll just take a sip of water here. Um, I, I don't think it's... Um, it's not one of those fluorescent inks that Noodless has. It's not that, but it's it's... Just try it out. You'll see what I mean. It sort of reflects the light in a way, like it's a little... I wouldn't say a metallic sheen, but it has a type of sheen to it. Unlike an ink like Gerbin 1670, which is red and has that gold sheen, this is actually a black sheen. It's, it's very difficult to explain. Uh, let's call it a shiny ink. That's the, the, the simplest thing I can, I can make of it. Alright, then we need a brush. And with the brush and some water, we're going to see how well this ink keeps up. Is it dry? It's dryish. That was step one. Then we have the eyedropper of death. We'll let that sink in. What does the Tardif test tell us? Well, you see this nice dark black Maybe just a little bit of, of, of some really dark grey in there. In, I have used this ink in nibs that range up to 15 millimeters, so really wide dip nibs. It's always black, as black as can be. So, it's really a black and not a grey. I'll show you a, uh, another black in comparison later on. For now, I think it's a good idea if we start to work on the scorecard while this stuff is drying. So here we go. Uh, cleaning. I would say cleaning is okay to good. This is a very dark, black, somewhat thick ink. I've never had any permanent discoloration in converters or whatever, uh, but it is dark, so Cleaning this will take a little bit longer than other inks uh, may take, but in the end, you know, everything is going to work out just fine. Bleed through. I don't seem to recall it's too bad, but we'll have to check that out in this paper and some copy of paper. The color, gee, what would the color be? Uh, black? And then we have shading. Well, there is none. I mean, it just doesn't shade this ink. Uh, then we have flow. In general, I'd say flow is, is good to very good. You see it in these pens, I ink them up, they write straight away. Um, this is the one ink I, I tend to put in my Ahab, uh, Noodless Flex pens, etc. Just because it's, it performs so well. I think it's, it has something to do with the thickness of the ink, relative thickness. I mean, I haven't really measured it or anything, I just got the feeling it's, it's somewhat thicker than, than other inks. It takes a bit longer to dry, usually. I was really surprised at these three passes that went so fast, but um, I think the thickness makes the pens a little less prone to railroad. But maybe that's just me. So, flow, then we have feathering. Feathering, feathering. Well, it's anti-feather, isn't it? So, let me just grab a sheet of toilet paper. Sorry about the sniffing, guys. I've got a bit of a cold. Um, and I, I write on this. 
You see those thin lines? Uh, let me use another black. I'll come back to that in a second. That seems to do pretty well. Let me take uh, some uh, some magenta. No, this is no longer magenta. What have I gotten here? Oh, I know what this is. This is Florida Blue. You know, the extremely well-behaved Boy Scout of Inks? You see the difference? This is feathering like crazy, even when I'm just... I'm barely touching this paper. It feathers. An anti-feather! is a lot better. Not a whole lot better. <laughs> of course when you put this on paper and you just hold it there it's going to feather. When you just do these quick dashes you see there's not a whole lot of feathering. And with other inks, I mean what have I got here? Dye mine ancient copper? There's just way more feathering. I am surprised at this black. I'll come back to that in a second. It was a little bit of a silly demonstration but I hope you've uh, appreciated it. Okay. Now that we're here anyway, let me get rid of this excess water. Uh, feathering, I will come back to that once I've written on the copy of paper too. For now, let's finish up our scorecard. Drawing time... long. Uh, I'm surprised at how fast stuff used to dry on this Rhodia paper, um, but on many other papers I've had to wait, wait for a number of minutes before it was fully dry. It's really wet, but uh, I, right now I can't really recall whether this is one of those bulletproof inks, uh, but it is, it is a, uh, well, very resistant ink, and it, the, 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 the downside of that, I mean, there's no such thing as a free lunch, right? So the downside of that is that you will have to wait long for it to dry, but you will get something that's uh, highly durable. Waterproofness. Well, I don't know about you, but this is completely legible. Sure, the water has turned a little black, but the lettering is there. Nothing happened to it. I poured, I mean, just a fairly copious amount of water on this. There were big droplets of water on that, and the whole thing is intact. Even the thin lines haven't watered down. So I would say waterproofness is excellent. So if that's what you're looking for, and clearly you don't want to use an Indian ink in um, an India ink in fountain pens, I would say this is pretty good. Now, just one thing I'd like to do before we move on to the copier paper is have a look at a comparison ink. Um, so here we have. Noodlers, sorry, Noodlers, X Feather, and this is what it would look like with some flex. Can't go too fast. And then a little patch of ink. What I chose as a comparison is that used to be my calligraphy ink, Gerbin Perle Noir. Another very nice black, black uh, which is quite good, a bit thinner, so now I get this problem that my pen doesn't want to start up anymore. I have to push some ink down there again. There we go. Flex. Another very nice dark ink. Um, oh, come on, you can do it. Now, I'm just going to cheat a little and quickly blot that out because I have no idea what this ink is going to do with water. So, and I'm grabbing 
presentation. It's going to run down. I don't think it is as waterproof as X Feather, but so far it doesn't look too bad. Surprise! Okay, so this is what I would call a comparable ink. Um, you could also use something like Visconti Black, but that's definitely grayer. That's a bit more of a dark gray. Alright! Cheap copier paper. Let's start with some simple fine writing. The quick black fox. Medium. Broad. I'm writing quite largely here. I just love this broad nib. I mean, this is with this ink, I think it's almost like a felt tip pen, and with the italic, it gets even worse. And I mean, worse in a, in a positive way, actually. I mean. If you really want this sort of fat effect, then this is a great ink, I think. Okay, let's have a bit of flex to see whether we can induce any feathering. I'm laying down a thick line of ink here. going very slow. Because I really want to put this to the test. There we go. And then... Maybe some... I don't know. This is just the letter E. I don't know why. Maybe because it was easy. Okay. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't see any noticeable feathering in this flex writing. This is the wetness I was talking about. Uh, maybe you see a little bit of a glitter in the light. I do. I'm not sure whether the camera picks it up. That's fine. Uh, let me see. What I want to do is the same thing with the Pelle Noir. I hope the nib is going to enjoy that because I've always found Pelle Noir to be fairly thin and the flex pens don't always like that. Okay, so what I wanted to show you has happened. Oops, sorry, I just hit the camera. Um, let me see if I can... I'm reaching for a loop here, which I can't find immediately. It doesn't really matter. You can probably see it with the naked eye. We're starting to get a lot of feathering here. You see that? That was one of the things I did not like about Pell Noir. It is a little prone to feathering. You see a lot with the flex nibs. And if you do calligraphy with very wide nibs, then this can often happen. Um, and this, I think I pushed this pen even further into flexing, and I don't see a single bit of feathering here, in all honesty. I don't see it there either. Whereas this ink is only getting worse. You see that? It's really feathering like crazy. So, there you have it. Let's round this up. Oh, bleed through. Yes. Good point. Right there. But that is, in fact, Perle Noir. Uh, this is all good. A little bit there, but that's probably... I mean, that's very flexy writing. 
And here we have the copier paper. Well, you see that the Perle Noir bleeds through like crazy. Whereas the uh, anti-feather does it a little bit, but not as pronounced. And with regular writing, I don't see any bleed through. So that's quite cool. Bleed through, so I would say, is good. Feathering is very good. You can really do a lot of this stuff without it starting to feather. So, there you have it. My number one black ink. I love it dearly. I hope this was useful. And um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.